So welcome to chapter six. Chapter six is all about percents, but in the beginning of this chapter, we gotta review a few things to make sure we're ready. So in this first video, we talk about um, converting, comparing, putting fractions, decimals, and percents in order. Um, there are actually kind of three targets that we're gonna cover today, but I spaced them out so you'll write them down when we get to each one in the notes. So this covers both 6.1 and 6.2. If any of this is tricky or you say, man, I really need more practice with it, go back to those pages in the book and there's lots more examples. We're going to go over it quickly because it's mostly review. So some of you are probably sick of seeing this, but converting, just converting back and forth between fractions, decimals, and percents. Got to be able to do it. So write down this pre-target. Pre means it's something we've already learned, um, but we're going to review it. So copy down the target and then I'll talk through one of each type and then let you finish the rest as practice. So. If I start with a fraction, I can simply um, type that into my calculator, remembering that this line tells me to divide. This is 5 divided by 12, 5 over 12. When I type that into my calculator, I'll get the decimal. So I just copy that off my calculator. If I didn't have a calculator, I could do long division to get that. And then once I have the decimal, I just have to remember that to turn it into a percent, um, I would need to move the decimal place over two places to the right to turn it into a percent. So I get 41.6%, okay? What if I start with a percent? So this next one, 2%, well, I'm gonna work backwards now, so I move the decimal places two places to the left. That's because 2% means two out of 100, and two divided by 100 moves the decimal place over, and I would get this. And then the fraction, I already have the fraction there, 2 out of 100, but I need to simplify it. 2% or 2 hundredths would simplify to 1 over 50. So make sure you always give me the simplified fraction. And then what if I start with the decimal? Well, again, move it over two places to the left to turn it into a percent. So this is 9, 9 tenths, 9, um, the decimal 9 tenths, which would come out to a percent of 90% or 9 tenths, I just get that fraction, and it's already simplified. So actually pause now, do these quick, and make sure you're okay. If you start with a fraction, decimal, or percent, make sure you can find um, what to convert it into. Okay, check the rest of yours, make sure you're good. Again, go back to section 6.1, or we've done other review together in class two if you're looking for more practice with these. So this is our first official target for chapter six, but it also is review, something that we've done before. So finding fractional parts of numbers, finding a, f um, a part of a number without a calculator. And we've talked about this shortcut, but I wanted to give you some examples with a picture to see if it helps. So you need to draw these bars on your notes, draw the picture as we talk about it. So four ninths of 18. Well, if this entire bar represents 18, so from 0 to 18. If I split it up into ninths, let's see, something like that, I should have nine sections, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay? How big would each of those sections be? Well, if I have nine sections and it has to make 18, then it makes sense that each of these should be 2, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. And if I need four ninths, I need four of those sections. So one, two, three, four. Two, four, six, eight. I get eight. Or three fourths of 28. Well, so if this is a bar that represents from zero to 28, and I want fourths, let me split it up into four sections. How big is each section? Well, to do that, I'm going to be doing 28 divided by 4, cut into four sections, and this would be 7, 7, 7, 7, right? Well, now if I need three of those fourths, that means I need three of those sections. So 7 plus 7 plus 7 gives me 21. Or 6 fifths of 45. Go ahead, take this whole bar and split it up into fifths and see how many um, would be in each section. And then we'll talk about how big six fifths is. So pause for a second and then we'll come back and check. So I should get each of these sections is nine, right? Nine, 18, 27, 36, 45 to make a total of 45 here. And I need six of them. So one, two, three, four, five 
and it looks like I have to add on another section to get six. This would be my sixth one. So 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. So in this case, I actually have an improper fraction, which means I'm going to end up with a number bigger than I started with, but I can still do it the same way. still works. All right, last one. Um, try this one totally on your own and see what you get for an answer. Pause. So I split 24, I divided it into six pieces, that gave me four for each section, and then I needed five of those, five sixths, and I got 20. So like we talked about, you don't have to draw the bars every time, there's a shortcut. So the shortcut is to, um, like if I want three eighths of 72, I'm going to take 72 and divide it by eight, break it up into eight pieces, figure out how big the pieces are, and then I need three of those pieces. So my work would look like this, and this is what you should be writing down. 72 divided by 8 is 9, and then I need 3 of those pieces, so I would get 27. Or 5 eighths of 64. Well, 64 divided by 8 is 8, and I need 5 of those pieces, so that would bring me to 40. Okay, so try the next four. Um, and then if you need more practice after this, we're going to do some in class or you already have a worksheet um, or let me know if you need more practice um, with these types of questions. So pause and then we'll check. All right, hopefully that's what you got. We're going to move on to the next target. So please write down target two in the space on your paper. So this is where we're going to actually um, kind of compare things and put them in order from least to greatest. We've done a little bit of this too, but we'll do more as practice. So if I have a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers here, but some are written as decimals, some are written as fractions, and some are as percents. If I'm going to put them all in order, I need to have them kind of all in the same format so that I can put them where they go on a number line. It's hard to compare things that are written as fractions and percents and decimals all at the same time. So the easiest way is probably turn them all into decimals. So that means this one's good to go, this one's good to go, and that one's good to go. The rest of them I should convert. The percents are pretty easy, right? Move your decimal place over. And this one. And this one. Careful with your placeholder there. Make sure you get 0.07. Okay, so now those are good. And then my fractions. I got three fractions here. I should just divide them on my calculator or use long division, but it's easier on the calculator. So divide those and write down the decimals. So pause and check those. Okay, once you have them all as decimals, then we have to look and find our biggest and our smallest number so we know how to set up our number line. Looks like I'm going to have to go from 0 0.07, that might be my smallest, to point. 8, 3 as my biggest. So if I look at the number line I have here, I probably should count by, looks like, tenths. If I start at 0, then point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, point 0.4. So finish numbering your number line. you got to count by equal intervals. So I've set this up to go all the way from 0 to point 0.9. Then I can start putting these each where they go where they belong. So, smallest one, 0 0.07 is a little bit less than 0 0.1. So maybe you'll draw a line like that. Um, I'll do one more and then let you finish and put them where they all go. Next, looks like the next biggest one might be 0 0.11. Yep, so 0 0.11 would be just over 0 0.10, like that. So you've got what, seven more, put them where they go, just like this. Put a dot on the number line and then kind of a line up above it to, to label each one. All right, hopefully it looks something about like that when you're done. So I've got all nine dots on there and they're all labeled in order from least to greatest. All right, last slide. So before we move on in the rest of chapter six, you should be able to put any fractions or decimals in order and or you should be able to just tell me which is bigger if I give you any fractions, decimals, or percents. So do these four as practice and then we'll go over them. So pause and then we'll check. So for the first one I turned them both into decimals so I'm comparing 0.85 or 0 0.80. Well that one's bigger. Or 0.28 or 0.29. Well 0 0.29, 29 hundredths is bigger than 28 hundredths. Or 0.25 or 0.28. 
0.28 is bigger. And 0.49 or 0.94, 0.94 is bigger. Um, the only catch here is just make sure, pay attention if there's any negatives, careful with those, because you're going to have to think about actually which one is closer to zero instead of just which one is a bigger number. Um, so negatives can be a little tricky, but if you know how to do this, we should be good to move on to the rest of chapter six.